Hi, I'm Nick Lagaris, and today I'm going to show you how to turn two soft bricks into a crucible for pouring bronze. I'm going to show you how to carve the bricks up to get the shapes that you want and you'll need, and uh, how to create the holder to allow you to pour about four pounds of bronze at a time. Let's get going. One thing you'll want to know is where to get fire brick. And I go to this place. It's uh, Smith Sharp Fire Brick Supply. Their website is ssfbs.com. Uh, Marshall and the crew over there do a great job. They can answer all your questions. They recommended I take uh, the 2600 high strength, low iron insulating fire brick. And one of the things that I found out this trip, I've made this kiln several times, but there's a three inch size as well as a two and a half inch size. And that means you can pour more metal with a three inch brick because I'm gonna cut this will be the bottom and I'm gonna cut this a little bit deeper. Uh, the top part, uh, which has the opening in it uh, to add metal and to create an, uh, a little airspace above it for your heat to come in, um, that only needs to be regular two and a half. So once you've got it, now you got to mark it and cut it. So uh, I've cut the top already and I want to cut the bottom now to mate with that and uh, I'll show you how to do that. I'm using a standard masonry bit, in this case a three-quarter inch one, and I'm setting the limiter on my drill press down to the depth that I want so that when I'm uh, cutting I never cut any further. I want to keep an inch of material around uh, the hole that I'm creating for my bronze, at least an inch in all directions. So uh, that is the size of your crucible essentially. I'm just going to drill a series of holes down the length of the brick and eliminate a lot of the volume. You you don't want to compress the brick too hard, so be careful as you're drilling that you're not exerting too much downforce or you'll crack your brick. Okay, I've roughed out most of the material, and now I'm going to switch to a stone mount. And this is a, a pretty common uh, stone tool, a, a grinding tool. And I'm going to again mount this. Um, I like its tapered shape, uh, but I couldn't drill with this without cracking this material because the pressure I'd put on it would be pretty tough. And so I'm just changing this out, and I'll shape out the rest of this, which gives me a nice tapered edge to my crucible as well. your way to the edges and the corners so you keep your line nice and straight. So now I've finished the cutting, the rough cutting here, and you can see it's still a little bit uh, uneven on the inside, but it's good enough for what I'm doing. And uh, the last thing I'll need to do is actually cut an in, a slot, a, a pouring lip here uh, that uh, takes a little from this side as well as from this side. Uh, but I want to first make the holder. Now this holder would just, was really designed for the uh, thinner brick, the two-inch brick. So I want to make another one of these that'll fit this thicker brick. And uh, I'll want this band. Uh, to be above the halfway point and to wrap around the brick to support it and then to have a handle that I can easily then grip and uh, pour with a lot of control. 
Because I'm going to a thicker brick, I'm going to have to remake these U-shapes on my holder. The holder is just made out of steel. Uh, this is just a U-bolt and some quarter-inch square steel. And so it keeps it light, but the double sides here make it easy to tip and pour. Uh, I just want this to hold the brick a little deeper so that the weight is uh, balanced. So I've used a brick uh, in the vise here and I've clamped the top down and now I'm just going to heat both sides and bend them down. And this should work pretty slick. He bends steel with his bare hands. Nice, you can use the brick to, uh, uh, a hard brick to, that's the same dimension to shape that steel. Keep it nice and straight. Looks pretty good. So you can see I welded the new brackets onto the frame and I've stretch wrapped the two bricks together and marked it for my pour spout. If you're right handed, I prefer to pour uh, out the left. Uh, it's totally your choice. So I've set up my three-quarter inch drill again, and I'm going to drill this just slightly off-center to the high side. That looks pretty good. All right, so I've drilled the hole, and now you can see how your torch tip is gonna go in through here, or point in there, uh, to heat up this space. But I wanna make it easy for the bronze to flow out, so I'm going to shape this more into a funnel shape. And I've got the, you know, the nice riffling files, uh, but I don't wanna ruin those. You know, just a sure form, half round sure form, does a really quick job of this. The final step in the preparation for casting is to use a kiln wash. And kiln wash is applied just with a brush. You mix the stuff up. Uh, I, bu I buy it from Continental Clay, um, again, in Northeast Minneapolis here. Um, www.continentalclay.com. And uh, it's just a powder, mix it, get it so that it's kind of like a heavy cream. All right, so I've coated all these surfaces, and you can see the texture is pretty much gone, uh, or it's much smoother. Um, also coating right out through that uh, hole that we add the bronze through. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit, and then we'll fire it up and dry her out. One of the reasons I use this tapered bit um, is that when we clean out the crucible, we want to be able to pull out the junk that forms uh, uh, flux and uh, bits of crap that form on the side of the brick and this gives us the ability to clean the brick and use it many more times. If you didn't do this, the flux would really attack that uh, fire brick and, and destroy the surface and I'll show you a picture of that as well. So you notice the top is wired. I used a couple of pieces, uh, just a s couple of wraps of uh, black wire and twist tied it and that you know it's going to crack on you from uh, the heat but I didn't want to add a lot of weight by adding a steel band so that just makes it a lot easier. And I was talking about how uh, these wear and you can see how the flux penetrated the, the uh, fire brick. Um, I had to break the last brick out of here, uh, the last crucible up in order to get it out of the frame. 
and you can see it does kind of work into the fire bricks. So by cleaning it and adding additional kiln wash, um, it'll last a lot longer. I got, I think, maybe at least 15 or 20 pours out of this system. So well worthwhile. I'm getting ready to cast now with this new crucible, and this is the basic setup. So you see in front of me is an investment mold, and it's a pretty good sized one. Um, I've got it covered because it's still at about 700 degrees. I want to retain the heat. Um, this, what's in there uh, looks like this. It's the facade of King's College in Cambridge. Um, it's the chapel. And so this is pretty good sized. Uh, it's, this is the biggest mold I've ever poured using this technique. Now I've loaded up the crucible with bronze and this is out of an ingot mold that I had some leftovers. Sometimes I'll use pieces like this that are left off of old castings. And the nice part of that is they, they fit through the, the top of the, the crucible and that's how you can add metal uh, while you're uh, firing this off. Now you'll notice that the torch tip is pointed directly into uh, the furnace. And with the top on here, I want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. And so I can set, I can move either the torch or the, or the crucible. Hit that hole perfectly. So I'm ready to fire it up and, uh, oh, I've also got uh, an old screwdriver that I use to push the metal around. Um, some flux that I'm going to use at the very end to clean up the surface of the bronze. And what else do you need to know? Oh, this is a number nine tip, oxy-selling setup, pretty typical. Uh, so let's fire it up. All right, so I fired it off. And, uh, I'm going to just uh, open the top of the crucible and, and uh, add a little flux to clean it up a little bit, scrape it off, and uh, we'll just check how the metal feels. I don't have a way to really check the temperature of the metal. I want it to be flowing like water, have a mirror surface to it, and uh, over the years I've kind of developed it and hopefully we're in the right range. So I'm happy with my casting. Uh, it turned out quite well. Good detail, you can see compared to the original wax. All there. And uh, the back as well turned out. Um, let's see the screw and gate system. And some of the lettering down there. Up above. Mr. Cleobear's name. Dr. Stephen Cleaver seems to come out pretty well. So now, time to clip corn clean. <laughs>